First question is from Mo Strength Gains. Is there any instance where partial reps are better than a full range of motion? Oh, good old partial reps Ooh. versus full range of motion. Are they worth anything? Argument <sighs> to know. be continued. You know, back, I brought this up before, but in the 90s, there was a book, early 90s, that came out. I think it was called, uh, I don't remember the name of it. Uh, I'm trying to remember, but Paul DeMeo was on the cover. He's a bodybuilder who passed away. And in this particular book, the author promoted heavy partials over full range of motion. He said, if you do a partial with lots and lots of weight, the load it stimulates more muscle in the full range of motion. Anyway, it turned out to be wrong. Nobody, nobody builds more muscle that way. So generally speaking, and studies support this, full range of motion is superior. Now, are there cases where partial range of motion is better? Absolutely. If you're an athlete, and there's a specific range of motion that you need yeah. to train. Uh, yeah, that'd be the only example I was going to bring up. Yeah, so like if you're a basketball player, full range of motion squats aren't going to benefit you as much as partial range of motion squats because when you're jumping, you're not going all the way down and jumping up. No, you so want to generate power in, in you know, like a more of a – like. It, I mean, it's it's definitely a partial squats kind of situation. Like yes. You're going to do that in terms of like going all the way down to a squat. You're never going to really see that. Yes. Now, the, the other way is if there's a – part of your range of motion that is just disproportionately uh, not stable or you just need to improve it better. So like, let's say for example, when you do a squat, when you get down to the bottom, you just lose a lot of stability and strength and it's disproportionate to how much you're supposed to lose when you do the bottom, right. when you're at the bottom. Well, then it might be good to do kind of bottom position squats where you squat down to the very bottom and you come, come up a little bit. And, yeah. yeah. Right. Or yeah. if you have issues with lockout, like power lifters will do, Sometimes these lockout bench presses to help with lockout. But besides these specific uh, ways of applying partials, um, besides that, full range of motion generally will give you better. And of course, it's all within the context of good form, good technique, good stability. Full range of motion with bad stability is just a recipe for injury. So as long as everything's good... Generally speaking, you're just going to get better overall results. Overall yeah, it's results. rarely I, it's rarely ever uh, as good. It's definitely I don't see it better unless it's very specific to that. Now I can see where um, it's less detrimental if you utilize it in certain cases. For example, if I do if I'm training, let's say uh, like twenty ones are an example of this, right? So a bicep curl twenty ones. Everyone's probably done these before, where you come down halfway up seven times, then you do start at the bottom halfway up seven times, yeah, and then you, do, then you do seven full range of motion. So I, I find that uh, there it's less detrimental if you also include full range of motion with that sure. training session, right? So if you did a, a, an exercise where you're doing you know deep squats for two or three sets, and then you have one set where you go like these short pumping right. sets, I don't think that's going to hurt your overall range of motion. And if I'm just trying to maybe, let's say, chase the pump because it's a hypertrophy phase mm -hmm. of training, I see some value in that. Do I think it's better than full range? No, I don't think it's better, but I think it's less detrimental as long as you are including the full I range. I think that's a good point because, uh, you know, you want to fight the – the bad patterns that may occur if you get really into the, the the partial rep type of mentality, which, you know, in bodybuilding, obviously, you know, you could feel a lot of the pump from that and, and uh, you know, get the blood flow from that. So you feel like, you know, your muscles are really filling up. But then again, now we're, we're slowly sort of degrading our range of motion and capabilities. And two, you're not going to be able to generate force in certain areas of these movements that you really need to. So to be able to include the full range with the partial is really essential. Well, you bring up a great point too with bodybuilding. Like, I mean, you guys probably experienced this uh, more so in having mind pump than you ever did before when you guys hired these models to shoot for our totally. programs, right? So not, not to call anybody out in, in our uh, specifically, but, you know, we've hired a bunch of models to shoot for the programs when we refaced them years ago. And of course, we hired bodies that look aesthetically pleasing for camera and stuff, and not thinking that oh, these these guys that have been training for twenty years of their life will have problems doing like an overhead press or a very basic movement. Uh, but they did. Yeah. I remember Justin coming. <laughs> I remember Justin texting me like, "Bro, <laughs> what did you do to me here? I can't I can't get these guys to do this this exercise. It's like it, it looks terrible. I don't know what to do. Or am I going to scratch it? Or am I going to sub it for somebody else doing it? But well, you would never guess that because you look." Look at their body, and their body yeah, looks they got amazing. An impressive body, but they can't uh, produce that movement. And it's no. because they've trained, you know, this. And we're specifically talking about the two exercises that come to mind that I remember Justin texting me about was overhead press, overhead press, and then the uh, tricep extensions behind the head. Yep. So being able to keep the dumbbell 
behind and your, fully extend. Yeah. Well, and also be able to it pull. Requires a lot of shoulder mobility. Yeah. 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 There's a lot of shoulder mobility to be able to pull your elbows back and not hit your dumbbell up against your head. So, or you have to modify and arch your back like crazy in order to do that. And so a lot of these bodybuilders that look uh, great, but because they do so many of that shortened range of motion, they, they lack yeah, the and, mobility. And again, generally speaking, uh, full range of motion builds more muscle anyway in average people. Sometimes we look at bodybuilders and we use them as an example. Uh, but the problem is you're dealing with super genetically gifted, often anabolically enhanced uh, athletes whose bodies respond way more to resistance training than the average person. So it's hard to say, oh, that's that's what's good because that's what works on this, you know, 0.1% uh, you know, genetics uh, type of a person. Yeah. But yeah, full range of motion. There's also the sliding filament theory. I'm not going to get super detailed in it, mostly because I can't explain it very well. Yeah. But essentially muscle the fibers yeah. slide across each other. And in full range of motion means you're getting more of this motion. And each time it slides across and it contracts. These little attachments will form and break. That's what causes a little bit of that muscle damage and that soreness. The fuller the range of motion, the more you're going to get this action. The shorter the range of motion, the less you're going to get of it. So that's why fuller range of motion. It's one of the theories as to why full range of motion in studies tends to build more muscle than short range of motion, even if there's lighter weight with the full range of motion. 